Hello, my name is Torbjörn Nordling and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering of the National Shengong University. I'm also the general chair of this workshop. Now, behind me I have the Shengong Lake, which is a beautiful place for relaxation at the National Shengong University Kung Fu campus. The National Shengong University was founded in 1931 as Tainan Technical College. Now it's my honor to present to you our honorary chair, Executive Vice President, Chair Professor Wu. It is a pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of the National Shengong University in Taiwan. I'm proud that our team, the NCKU Parkinson's Disease Quantifiers, are one of the finalists in the OpenCV AI competition. They are also arranging this workshop. Now let us all learn computer vision and AI using the OD camera together. Hello and welcome. I am Akram Ashiani, postdoc researcher at the Department of Mechanical Engineering of National Chengkong University and assistant chair of this workshop. It is my honor to introduce Professor Wei Chun Chiang, a project assistant professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering of National Chengkong University in Taiwan. His research interests include computer vision, deep learning, digital signal processing, and artificial intelligence of things. He will present a food image recognition system for a school lunch using deep learning neural network that classifies food into a specific categories. Their experimental results demonstrate that this system provides suitable accuracy and can serve as a convenient tool for food recognition. Hi everyone, I'm Wei Jun Jiang from Department of Electrical Engineering, National Chengong University. Today I'm very glad to share our team's research result. And the topic is a food image recognition system for school lunch using deep learning neural network. This is the outline. First, we will introduce our research motivation and explain how to obtain analysis data. Then introduce the deep learning algorithm used, used in this research. After the preliminary analysis results are obtained, several food categories that are more difficult to identify will be discussed and the possible workaround solution will also be proposed. And finally is the conclusion and future works. According to statistics from WHO in 2021, there are 39 million overweight children worldwide, and the trend continues to increase. Children's nutritional index is getting more and more attention. So, how to record children's nutritional intake in an intelligent way has become a hard research topic. And the quickest and the most intuitive way is to save food records through photo identification. So, in this research, where does all the data come from? Our research team has built up a platform called Smart Campus Catering Service Platform to collect nationwide school lunch information since 2019. User need to upload school lunch information, including food image every day, to this platform by government regulations. And so far, there are already more than 300,000 school lunch images in this database. So this, page, this slide shows our app used by lunch secretary and they will upload food image by our app and open it to browse and check the current
correction of the photos on the, on the website. Our system architectures is divided into three parts, namely front-end, back-end, and offline operations. The front-end includes apps and web pages for users to take pictures and browse the results. After that, the photo is sent to the backend database stored for to store through API and identify food categories through the AI model which is deployed on the jungle. In the offline operation, food image categories will be labeled and the AI model will be trained on the offline process. And in our food image recognition process, the food image is used as the input of the AI model and the result of the food category identification is the output on the AI model. And we tried efficient net B0 and efficient net B4 in our research. We also use sharpness aware minimization method as our model's optimizer. SM is proposed by Google research team in 2021, and SAM improves model generalization simultaneously minimizing loss value and loss sharpness. So we seek out parameter values whose entire neighborhoods has, have uniformly low training loss value. And the sharpness is by measuring how quickly the training loss can be increased by moving from weight to a nearby parameter. And before starting to train the model, we pre-processed the food image based on the data distribution. These are some examples from school lunch food images. It can be seen that the photos do not have certain shooting specifications and they may be packed in containers of various shapes. And the training dataset picked up from school lunch database contains more than 27,000 images with a total of 15 different food categories. The most are jujubes, which are a total of 619 pictures. The least is Fusan letters, a total of 104 pictures. And it can be seen from the resolution statistic of the photos that the resolution of most photos is around 30, 320 by 240, while the default input resolution on efficient net is 224 by 224, and there is little difference between the two. Therefore, we resize the resolution of all photos to 224 by 224 as the input of the efficient net model. And the experimental result is using ImageNet pre-train weight and all training data are as follows. In the first exper experiment, we try to we tried the efficient net B0 model and which input resolution is 224 by 224 and the batch size is 64 and we used Adam as optimizer learning rate is set to 0 0.0001 because of the fine-tuned pre-trained weight and the epoch is 10 and finally, we got the test accuracy of 16. Sorry, the test accuracy reaches 70%. And this figure shows all 15 food categories. And we can observe that in which some 
classes precision and recall rate is very low. So we use the confusion matrix to observe the categories that are easy to be misjudged and find two situations that are easy to misjudge. In first case, sweet and sour chicken, potato stew, and, and sesame oil chicken are more likely to be judged as curry chicken. And the second case is organic kamatsu vegetables, organic green pine cabbage, rapeseed, Fusan lettuce, Chinese kale, spinach, Xinjiang cabbage, and goose cabbage are easily judged as Taiwanese lettuce. And then we tried efficient net B0 with them. The test accuracy reached 76% which is higher than just use efficient net B0. But for categories that were not easy to identify correctly, the effect has not been significantly improved. And still some misclassifications were observed from confusion metrics. And then we try the advanced efficient net, uh, efficient net B4, with which with much more trainable parameters, and using Adams and SAM optimizer. And the test accuracy reaches 84 percent, which is better than previous result. But unfortunately. We still can't handle the green vegetable classes. And uh, uh, from confusion matrix, there still the same misclassification is exist. So we looked inside these hard cases and which has large intra interclass similarity as shown in, in the photo. These four types of food are basically different, difficult to distinguish, even with human eyes. And so then we use a workaround method to try to improve accuracy, which means we combined all vegetables to one class. So we got totally class to 41. And after the combination, we use efficient net B4 model with with SAM optimizer, and the recognition accuracy can be further increased to 19%. And finally, an acceptable recognition effect can be achieved. Here we have sorted out several AI models we have tried in our research. It can be seen that efficient net B4 with SAM and Adam optimizer can achieve the best. So here is our conclusions. We use sharpness aware minimization algorithm to improve the accuracy and reduce training time. In the school launch data set used in this research, it was found that the categories of green vegetables are difficult to identify. And in order to further improve the accuracy, we tried to merge the vegetable categories and got good results in the end. That's to say, 41 classes we can reach the accuracy to 19% and the top 5 accuracy can reach to 99%. And in the future, our research topics will move toward the direction of predicting food weight and hope that after we can accurately identify the type and weight of food, we can finally achieve 
intelligent analysis of nutrition intake. And thanks for your attention. Hello, Professor Jiang. Hello, everyone. Welcome to join our Q and A session. Thank you very much for the great talk, and thank you for you to willing to join us. Here we have some question from the YouTube chat. Let me speak them out for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first few question is from Gavin. The first question is. Is it possible to use the YOLO model to improve the detection on similar green vegetables? Uh, okay, uh, YOLO model will use to object detection, but uh, in our case, uh, we are just used for uh, image classification. And so, uh, as I know, uh, EfficientNet is outperformed than YOLO in uh, image classification. Uh, but we will try, we will try how can if we can just target on the vegetable only or not not on the dishes or outside container, it, it maybe can improve the accuracy. Thank you. Next question also from Gavin. In what conditions, for example, brightness, lunchbox container, uh, lunch, lunchbox container shape, food distance from camera, your model has the base performance? Uh, theoretically, uh, if there is no dishes or no container, it will be uh, the best performance. Uh, but in in real 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 case, uh, it, it will become a uh, it will the container will contain uh, metal uh, metal or some uh, plastic is all, all all can be take into these photos. So it's the hardest part of our our mission and uh, so we, we still want uh, we still find a way to conquer this problem thank you very much next question what will you do further so that this model can decide whether the food in the lunch box has a good nutrition value to accomplish your motivation uh, pardon can you repeat uh, this question yes what will you do further so that this model can decide whether the food in the lunchbox has a good nutrition value to accomplish your motivation? Okay, uh, in this case, we have an idea is, uh, uh, in fact, we can gather the food information before, uh, the, the, before, before it be cooked. So we, we we may have uh, some period period knowledge uh, in our database, uh, such as uh, if we uh, if we have all this information of lunch, uh, we we can know the nutrition information further, and we just uh, in in this case we we can just mapping the photos and the uh, meal names before, so uh, in so we we can. Where we, we can do this matching. So the nu nutrition will not judge by photo only. Uh, we, we use some uh, information exist in our database. And so we just to do mapping job. Thank you very much for your great answer. The next question is from Yu Shan. Um, Thank you for an interesting topic. I would like to ask if the application can be used for suggest a person what to eat for a day to achieve healthy goal. Uh, yes, uh, because this database is just for school lunch, uh, but for students, uh, the, the uh, obesity uh, often happen is what do you eat after school or after class? Uh, so. Uh, in the next step, we, we will promote this system uh, for students not only used in school lunch. It can bring home because it can upload it. Uh, in it can download in your in your cell phone, uh, so so you can do this photo and recognition uh, after after school or or can use for such as dinner or breakfast. 
Thank you. Okay, the la next question is so far the last question. So for audience, if you have any more question, please feel free to drop your question in the chat. Um, okay, here comes the question. Is a model can also be used to detect, um, wait a minute. This is more nutrition in elderly people. Uh, Let me also type it in the chat, I think. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, we don't have elder people's photo. We, we just gather the data from school. So it, it not, not, uh, it's just Chinese food because, because of school's lunch, lunch type. It's only contain uh, Chinese food and divided such as rice uh, or or meal or vegetable and soap soap. So they can't cover uh, the total meal type. So uh, not 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 so elderly yet. It's just for children's school lunch. So if we want to develop, we, we will get the uh, another type of data so we can improve our algorithm. But, but still now we, we only can get photos from school. So this is a research limit. Okay, thank you very much. I think this is the end of today's workshop. If the audience have more questions, please also feel free to put in the chat. Later we can Maybe email to Professor John if there is any more question. So thank you very much for uh, for joining us, and thank you, Professor John, for your answer. We will have another talk at two. So let's see you next. Uh, let's see you that time. It's around thirty minutes later. Thank you, Professor John. Thank you, everyone. See you, everyone, later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.